Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this lovely Sunday afternoon. I know this is out of my regular time, but couldn't do it on Friday, so I decided to do it on Sunday. And hopefully, you will be able to download this and learn more about Living Diet Free. Again, this is part of the Living Diet Free group that is part of Diet Free Life. I am an ambassador for Diet Free Life and the Robert Ferguson program. And uh, I decided to do this group online because I had a lot of people that were contacting me saying I want to be a part of this and you know I just like doing stuff online anyway and this was a way for me to reach out to you virtually and to help you live your diet free life the best way now for the past this is week five for the past five weeks or so we've been talking all about the program how to get the program started how to eat what is a fat burning meal how to create your fat burning meals and how to implement them into your into your program that you're doing and today I wanted to talk about the other part of losing weight which is physical fitness physical activity because if you don't have physical activity it's not going to work you can you know diet all you want you will lose weight but you'll wind up actually losing muscle in addition to the fat and the water that you're you're losing and as a time Mr. Olympia Lee Haney always says if you lose muscle you're going to lose your metabolism because muscle burns fat. So we don't we don't want to do that. Muscle is what keeps you looking good. Muscle, like I said, actually burns fat. For every one pound of sculpted muscle you have on your body, you're going to burn 50 calories a day. So for every, let me say that again, for every pound of muscle you have on your body, you're going to burn 50 calories a day. But for every pound of fat you have on your body, you only burn four calories. So I'd much rather have the muscle than the fat. So if you lose muscle, you're going to gain more fat. So it's kind of like, why not put the muscle on? You don't have to look like uh, eight-time Mr. Olympia Lee Haney unless you're a guy. And you don't even have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You don't have to look like any of the Olympia bodybuilders. You can look just, just like yourself, look beautiful and awesome with your sculpted muscle. So I'm here to help you put the workout part in, put the fitness program in there. So today we're going to talk about how to get your fitness program started. Now if you have followed my blog and followed the radio show and followed me for any amount of time, you know that I'm always talking about how you can get your program started. I've talked about this several times. Well, I want to bring it down in so that we can put this as part of the Live and Diet Free plan for your life. Because remember, you're not just doing this for now, you're doing this forever. So. We're going to talk about the what, when, how, where, and why. Those five things we're going to talk about today. So the what is, of course, what are you going to be doing? The when is when are you going to work out? The where is where are you going to work out? The how is how are you going to accomplish this? Are you going to do it by yourself or with someone else? And the why, of course, is this is going to help your weight loss plan be successful. So the why, we've already answered that. So you know how to do that. So we're going to talk about the what. And the what is the type of exercise that you're going to do. Are you going to do classes? Are you going to do videos? Maybe you're going to go to the gym and work out with an instructor. Maybe you're going to have someone come to your home. Maybe you're going to someone else's home. Maybe you're going to get with the girls and go outside. So you need to, to decide the what. The what is very important because without that you can't get started anyway. So let's look, look at that a little bit. If you have some gyms in your area, just call them up and go get a free session. Most of them will take you on a tour of the gym, will allow you to work out in the gym, totally free of charge, so you can kind of look at what you want. Now, if you're going to go to a gym, I have to caution you that that free workout thing that they're talking about is not really free. They're trying to get you to join. Most of the, you know, because that's how they make the money. They're trying to get you to join, so be ready to sit down for a consultation and actually talk to them and you know anticipate it get ready to look at you know look at everything that Jim how clean is it um, how many people are on staff go at the time that you would normally go is are there a hundred thousand people there and you won't be able to get a machine or do you like being around a hundred thousand people maybe, maybe that's good for you that's cool it, it doesn't matter you know gyms are crowded at times they are not crowded at other times, go in the off times and see what it looks like then, see how many people are there. Maybe you are the person that's pushed by a lot of people being around or maybe you just want to be alone 
with yourself. <laughs> you don't need all these people around you. See what the classes are like. What is the schedule like? That's, that's your time to really investigate what's going on. You don't necessarily need to just join up when you go there. Take your time. Look around. Look at the cleanliness. Does it offer all the things that you want? If you're going to be going from work, directly from work, do you need to take a shower before you go home? Or maybe the shower facilities offer a soothing hot tub or a sauna. I love getting a sauna after I work out. Maybe to have that. Or maybe if you're going in the morning, you really, really, really do need the shower. So go look at the shower um, the facilities and see how it looks. Is it clean? Is it overcrowded? Do they have area where you can put your shampoos and whatever you're going to use if you're going to wash your hair or, you know, when you lay out all your makeup and or if you just have stuff you got to do in the morning, can you do it there? Or is the gym convenient enough where you can go to the gym workout and then go back home? Is the facility large enough? These are things you need to look at because remember, once you join, you're going to be paying every month. And if you're paying every month, you need to be using it. So maybe the big gym is not, and there are different types. There's the big box gyms like LA Fitness and uh, Lifetime Fitness, things like that that you know. Lifetime Fitness is like the echelon of gyms. They offer you everything. They have the hot towels for you. They have personalized services, but you pay for that. Maybe you don't want to pay that much. Maybe you want to go to like a LA Fitness, like I said, and that is, I love LA Fitness, by the way. That is an all-inclusive type of gym. They have all the services all in one. You pay one price. You get everything. The classes are all included. Maybe you want to go to one of the community gyms, which are they may be smaller, and they're probably cheaper. Some of them now you can get them for $10 a month. So, But with that, the only thing I like about some of the smaller gyms is they make you pay for the other things that you want. So if you want classes, you got to pay extra for that. If you want to... Um, do some of their other stuff that they have, you have to pay extra. So make sure you ask them, you know, what's included, what's extra, what, what am I really paying for? And then, of course, are you going to do personal training at this gym? Do they offer personal training? When are the personal trainers there? Are they there all the time? Do they schedule themselves, you know, according to your schedule? Or, or, or are there only certain times when the personal trainers are available? So you have to know that, too, if you're going to take advantage of the personal training. So that's all a part of the what. What about the classes? Are the classes included? What type of classes do they have? Do you want to take part in these classes? Some gyms have an amazing amount of classes. You know, everything from yoga to Pilates to strength training to cardio kickboxing. Some of them only have a few classes and they're very specialized. Well, maybe you're going to a specialized studio like a Pilates or a yoga studio. Ask what times are their classes. So you need to know what you're getting into, what you're actually paying for, what you're going to get once you pay this money. And then how do they take payment? Do you want to take this payment all at once? Is it cheap enough that you can go ahead and pay for this for one year? I wouldn't advise paying for longer than a year at a time, but maybe you want to pay for this all right now, or maybe you want to break it up into payments, however you want to do it. So however you can save the most money and make sure that you're going to do it. <laughs> Sometimes that monthly thing helps you get there. So that's all about the what. What if you don't want to join a gym at all? Maybe you want to go and find a personal trainer to come to your home. So if you're going to do that, well then you need to really investigate the person. Um, if you have somebody that's coming to your house, that's just like any other service provider that's coming to your home and you want to main, uh, make sure that you're safe, check them out before you even invite them out to your house for one thing. Maybe you want to meet them somewhere else at a coffee shop or something like that and see what kind of person they are, see what the vibes are that you get off of them, and then investigate. Give, uh, make sure that they can give you some references and call those references, references up and talk to them. And when you speak with this personal trainer or person that's coming to help you out, make sure that they are asking, what do you want to do? What are your goals? Um, or what have you done before? They, you don't need somebody to come in and just tell you, well, I have a bachelor's degree, I have this certification and that certification, I've worked with this people, I've worked with these people, I've helped this, I've helped. So what? Who cares? I want to know what you're going to do to help me. I don't care about those other people. Yes, I want to know that you've done this before, but I don't care what you've done with those other folks. Well, how are you going to help me? So you need to look at what's in it for you. So that's the what. Now we're talking about the when. So you need to sit down right now, get out your calendar, and figure out when you're going to be able to work out. So first of all, you have to pick out some days. So I would suggest that you start with two days. Two days that you know you're going to work out. 
maybe Tuesday and Thursday, maybe Monday and Wednesday, maybe Friday and Saturday, I don't care, just any two days, pick those, and those are your set in stone times that you're actually going to work out that you're really going to do it. So now you have your days. Now you need to pick your times. What time is most convenient for you to work out? And if you say nothing, I can't make it, I don't know how I'm going to squeeze it in, well, I don't want to hear that. I want you to pick out <laughs> the time, one time during each of those two days that you can work out. Whether it's in the morning when you first get up, or it's in the evening before you go to sleep, or maybe it's during lunchtime. So I don't care what you do, just pick it out. You've got the two days set, you've got the times. And then that brings us to another thing that we want to talk about now. And we want to talk about how are you going to fit this working out into your eating schedule. So remember last week we talked about you should be eating every two to three hours. You need to eat you know, breakfast, a snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, if you need all of those. So you need to be prepared to put that food together with your workout so you can have a complete program, right? Because it's all about working out, it's all about eating right, and it's all about changing your lifestyle habits. It's kind of like if you look at it, a three-legged stool. If you miss out on any one of those, those uh, legs, the stool is going to fall fall over, it won't work. So we're talking about integrating what you're eating, when you're eating, with when you're working out. So let's say for example breakfast. You need to eat breakfast within an hour of your waking up. So whatever time you wake up, I don't care if it's 8 o'clock in the morning, 5 a.m., 10 a.m., within an hour you need to be eating. So you need to get your, you know, get your body started, get yourself going. So you could basically work out in the morning and you have to see if you're the type of person who can eat in the morning or maybe you can't eat in the morning before you work out. This, we're talking about working out on the days that you're going to work out. So you can work out first. Go ahead and get all that calorie burn out of the way. Plus you'll burn more during the rest of the day if you do it first thing. So and then after you finish, you need to have a snack. So right after. So let's say you are working out. This is one of your workout days. So you have breakfast. Uh, you get up, you go work out, you come back, you eat breakfast, or you eat breakfast, you go work out, you come back, you have a snack. You need to eat that snack within one hour of you, of you completing your workout. This is to keep your calorie burn going, to keep your body stoked so that that fat burning is keeping going and so that you won't feel hungry. So you've worked out, you had your snack, so two to three hours later, you need to eat lunch. Okay. So let's say you're not the early morning person. You're saying, no, I can't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to work out. I just, you know, I already get up at 5. I can't get up any earlier. So maybe you can squeeze some time in two days a week during lunchtime. So let's say you get up at breakfast. I mean, you get up, you have breakfast within an hour. Two, three hours later, you have your snack. And then you either work out before or after your lunch. So you need to give like 30 minutes to an hour in between there, between you eat, between the time you eat and between the, and when you work out so that you're not going to get sick when you're working out. And it also depends on what you're doing. Now you may have a job where you have an hour for lunch, so you could go and do your cardio, finish, you know, freshen up, do a shower, you know, take the, <laughs> what they call the hooker bath where you get all the important parts and you go back to work depending on how much you sweat and how far it is and all that, and then you eat your food and then you're back to work. So once you eat, two to three hours later, you need to be having a snack, okay? Then, now we're at dinner. So, you know, you did your workout, you got your breakfast, lunch, snack, all that. So you're eating dinner, and you have to keep in mind that you need to keep two to three hours in there before um, you go to bed so that your stomach can be completely empty so that when you go to sleep you're burning fat and your body is doing all the things that it needs to do when it's sleeping and it's not trying to digest food because if you're trying to di if your body is trying to digest food when you're sleeping it's taken away from that fat burning and the fat burning is really just utilizing calories that you've used that you've eaten during the day that you've stored in your body for your body to do the other processes that it needs to do and it's like keeping you breathing while you're sleeping, making sure you're getting good rest, keeping your heart pumping, making sure your eyes are working, um, all the systems in your body are working, and so your body delves into that fat storage to supply energy to everything that needs to be done at night, because you think you're just resting and sleeping, but your body is really doing a lot. It's getting prepared, it's 
breaking things down from the day before and getting prepared for the next day. So it's doing a lot. It's just, you know, the nocturnal stuff it's doing. So make sure after you eat dinner that you have your last meal, whether it's dinner or a snack. So if you have dinner and then you're hungry later, two to three hours later, so you can eat a snack, but then remember you need to give an hour to three hours after that so that when you go to sleep your, stomach, your tummy is empty. So just keep that in mind. So maybe you're a nighttime workout person. Maybe you, you, know, you can't get up in the morning, you can't get away during lunch, but you can work out in the evening after you get off work. So I would suggest that when you get off work, you go straight to the gym or straight home or straight to that person's house or that person is waiting on you when you get home so you can work out right away. Because chances are if you get inside the house and you get your clothes off and you sit on that couch, you're not going to do anything else. So get prepared. Start out in the morning. Take your clothes with you. Pack your bag. Make sure you have your shoes. Make sure you have your socks. Make sure you have anything that you need to change into when you're leaving the gym is in that bag. Maybe you need deodorant or maybe you don't need deodorant. Maybe you don't need to do anything. Maybe you just need to just change into your workout clothes, go and work out, and then go home. Whatever it is that you need to do, I want, to, I want you to make sure that you're doing it right then and you have it ready. Your bag is packed. Everything's there and you don't need, and you might even need to put like a little snack inside because once you eat, if it's taking you a while to get home and then you got to cook and wait to eat, you may need to get a little snack in there. Maybe a protein bar or some fruit that's not going to perish in that bag. Maybe some popcorn that's already done. It's no, no salt on it, no butter on it, or maybe a little salt and no butter. I don't think I could eat popcorn without any salt. Ugh, that's kind of grody. But... <laughs> But that's how you have to do it. And then after you finish your work, your evening workout, you're going home and you're probably going to have to eat and then you can go to bed. So you finish your workout, you go home, you eat a light meal. I would suggest not having any. Maybe you can eat one of the, one of the meals that's like one-to-one, one, one carb, one protein, and make it a fast-burning carb and a protein. And then that's going to help you not have nightmares when you go to sleep. Try to wait, like, like I said, an hour to three hours after you work out to go to sleep. So now you have the what. We've talked about the what, right? We've talked about the when. Where? Now I know I talked about the gym, I talked about home, but you have to decide. Maybe you're actually going to purchase a gym membership, but you're only going to work out at the gym two times a week, and then you can do all your cardio and everything else at home because you have a treadmill. And you don't want to go all the way to the gym to just do the treadmill. Or maybe you're going to take a walk outside in your neighborhood twice a week. You need to get all that together. So where? Those two days, remember I said put down two days that you're going to work out. Are you going to do those two days at the gym? Are you going to do those two days at home? Maybe you're going to do one day at the gym and one day at home. Maybe you're going to go to a friend's house. I have a client who does hiking once or twice a week with a friend of hers, they get together, you know, right after work and go hiking. So all that, it can't be just haphazard. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to schedule this out. You have to know what you're going to do. You have to know when you're going to do it. You have to know how you're going to do it. And you have to be prepared. So we've talked about the what. The what is what exactly you're going to do. And we've talked about the where, whether it's home or gym. we talked about the when you know, how to space out your food. So you, you really have to do some work. You really got to plan this whole thing out. It can't just be left up in the air. You just pull something that, oh, I'm going to do this today. Oh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. You have to have it all planned out and ready to go. I promise you, you will do much better if you have all this planned out. So the next thing we need to talk about is where are you going to get these exercises from? Where, what are you going to know? How are you going to know what to do? Now, if you go, even if you're going to the gym, the machines are there, but the machines don't, they have instructions on them, but you have to read them to use them, but they only show you the proper form. That They don't show you all the exercises. Usually, one piece of equipment at a gym can be used for several different things. So, you need to go up online, type in Google, whatever the name, I always suggest you do this. Go to the gym, the gym that you're going to, see what the machines are, write the names of the machines down. When you go back home, go up on Google and say, put those things into Google and say, what is this machine? What are the exercises I can do with the pec deck? 
for instance. That's the one where you have your arms out and it works your chest, your pectorals. Or what can I do with the leg extension? The internet is a you know, you can find all type of information there. And if you get stuck on it, please just contact me. Go to OptimumBodySculpting.com. Send me a message saying, Carol, I have this machine, this machine, this machine. What do I do with them? I can get a, a workout together for you. And it would be very simple, <coughs> something you can follow. Okay, so what if you're at home? And you're like, Carol, what do I need to do at home? You do the same thing. Go up on the internet and look up workouts at home. Or better yet, you can go to Fitness Matters. F-I-T-N-E-S-S-M-A-T-T-R-Z dot com and all of it's right there. I have downloadable workout videos. There's belly dancing. There's Pilates. I just brought on a great yoga instructor. Got to get her videos. Her videos will be up there really soon. Um, I have a client, Angela, who's going through, she wants you to follow her along on her journey of losing weight and getting healthy. So we're taping our sessions and she's actually going through the workout so you can follow along with her on that workout so that's some good stuff plus I have the coaches up there the spiritual health and wellness coach Linus Woods Mullins I have the nutritional coach Wendy Battles Plaz I have Cheryl Pullins who is the lifestyle coach and the empowerment, empowerment coach Simone Kelly so all of those they have articles that are there they're going to help you live a better life change your life do better in what you're doing is great. And then I have the Tanya Stroh training solution where if you want to go to the gym or if you want at home, you can just put in whatever piece of equipment you have and Tanya's system will create a whole workout for you. So you can print that out, take it to the gym with you, or you can print it out, do it at home. You can look at it. It has video instruction. It's just great. And the other thing we're doing are the... Um, the Love to Love podcast series. And the next one's coming up. Let's see, the last one we did was with Dr. Ray and men's fitness, how, how to keep how to help your man be in better shape. That one was really, really good. We have some more coming up for in August. In August, the theme is preventing child, it, childhood obesity awareness. So we have two great um, people who are coming on to do seminars. You're going to really enjoy it. One of them was on Shay Gallick, who was on the show with me on Tuesday talking about Fit to be Kids. She's going to be doing something about fighting obesity in children. And then I have another good friend of mine, Susan Zimmerman, and her quest to fight obesity. She has a whole presentation. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So you, you're not alone. So let's say um, you haven't joined Fitness Matters, which I don't know why you would not join Fitness Matters. It's only nine ninety seven a month, and you get the first 30 days free, so you can try it out. But if you didn't, you can go to any of the fitness magazines. Most of them have websites, and they will have videos that you of exercises that you can do. They're not specifically catered to you specifically, but they will help you. So there you go. You don't have any. You don't have any reason for not being able to do what you need to do because it's all online. Everything's online. You can either go to fitnessmatters.com and and get the um, videos and the workout, the wellness coaching, and the podcasts that you need. You can go out on the internet and search and get plenty of exercises that are out there. You can go to a gym. You can hire a personal trainer or a health coach or a fitness coach or someone who can instruct you. Now, don't let it scare you about hiring a personal trainer because you don't have to lock yourself into a whole long six months or 12 month thing unless you know that's what they do some, some of them you can only get six months or 12 months sometimes they have three months see what their shortest program is and then decide if it's something that you want to do that you really 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 want to hire a personal trainer go for it I mean I'm a personal trainer I've had many 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 different I have many different levels of programs to go for I have introductory programs I have three months, I have six months, I have one year program. So it just depends on what you want. And a lot of trainers are like that. It depends on the gym that they're working at and if they are contractors or if they actually work for the gym. But like I said before, check their credentials, see how they're, um, see who certifies them, and then get them to show you some people that they've helped and make sure they're talking about you. They're asking you questions. What is it that you want to do? How can I help you get to your goals? So if the, like I said before, if the personal trainer is all, you know, me, 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 I did this, I did that, 
who cares about them going to the next one. There are too many of them out there for you to get stuck with any one person that you don't like. And then uh, one word of caution, if you train with that person and you leave that first session and you feel like they, they did not listen to you, they did not hold up to what they said they were going to do, then fire them immediately and go get you someone else. Like I said, there's just too many of them for you to settle. I want you to have a great experience, not an experience saying, oh my God, I got this personal trainer and they did this and I have run into that so many times, especially with women who have enlisted men personal trainers and there's some great men trainers out there, but some of them are not so great as in anything else. Some of the women are even not so great. If they don't listen to you, if they're not concerned about what you're doing, then you need to find someone who is. Okay? And let's see what else. Da -da -da. Magazines. I think that we have covered everything. So now, this is how you get your, your workout plan started. Sit down with your calendar. Pick out two days for next week that you can work out. Okay? That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is figure out what you're going to do on those two days. You may have to join a gym. You probably got to do some prep work. You may have to join a gym. You may have to join a personal training studio. You may have to enlist the help of a personal trainer. You may have to go up on the, on the Internet. You may have to join Fitness Matters. Whatever it is, you need to figure out what it is you're going to do. So you got to write it down. You have to figure out what time you're going to work out, morning, afternoon, evening. And in with that, you have to figure out when you're going to eat. So it all needs to be scheduled out. And then this, you know, tight, precise scheduling only, only lasts for about the first month or so. After that, you kind of get in a flow, you get a feeling, and you're not so regimented, but you have to train yourself. Remember we talked about how do you get, how do you get yourself disciplined? Well, you start <coughs> disciplining yourself, scheduling yourself, and you become more disciplined. You're only going to become more disciplined if you start doing it. So if you don't do it, you'll never become disciplined. So you got to do it. And you may say, oh, I don't want to, but how badly do you want to get in shape? How badly do you want to live diet-free? Don't you want to be able to go and eat anything you want at any time you want and not have to worry about gaining weight? That's what this group is all about, living diet-free. I don't want you to have to be constrained by diets and food and counting calories and all this all your life. Yes, you're going to have to do some work in the beginning. Who doesn't? Anything new that you start, you have to do work. You have to figure out what, what the program is all about, how it works, and then you have to incorporate it into your life, and then you just have to keep doing it. Rinse and repeat, you know, just like a wash cycle. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. So we want you to repeat in a good way because up until now, you've been repeating in a bad way. What I mean by that, yo, your diet's losing weight, gaining weight, get on another diet, lose weight, gain more weight, try to lose that. So I'm, we're cutting that is gone, all right? I want you to be in control of your life, your diet, what you eat, and don't really think about it. I hate when you think about it as a diet. I want you to think about it as an eating plan, an eating lifestyle, your whole lifestyle. This is your life, and I'm here to help you live it the right way. Okay, so we covered about the what, and we know that uh, your assignment is <laughs> to choose two days for next week, figure out what you're going to do when you're going to work out, how long it's going to take you to work out, how are you going to get to your workout place, is it in your house, is it at the gym, is it over a friend's house, whatever, where are you working out, if it's in your home, is it downstairs, is, is it in your bedroom, maybe it's right the room that you throw all those clothes in, maybe you need to get those clothes out of there. So whatever you need to do, I want you to get started on it. And then I want you to let me know. Visit me on optimumbodysculpting.com slash fitblog and let me know what's going on. So join me again next week. We're going to talk some more about your workout plan and trying to figure out what those machines do at the gym. Okay, so join me then. Can't wait to see how you're doing. So until then, stay fit.